Hey, welcome back to Ping Pong Flicks. My name is Chris Wong. It is time for that Justice League trailer breakdown. The trailer that I've watched maybe over two dozen times. I've lost count. Let's get to it anyway. So this is the first scene you go through. It's just really much the exclusive trailer, but it's got some snapshots here that you don't see in the trailer, like his hands turning into weapons. It's so cool. Can you tell? I mean, it really... The CGI on Heat, they really worked it best. It, it, you can see much more texture. It seems more seamless, more uh, believable in, in times. And I think they've really done a good job uh, fixing up the post-production here. Also, uh, already apparent is the colors. The colors are brighter. Uh, there's not much saturation in here. There's actually stands out. The reds come out. The blues come out uh, very well. And so this is the first scene where we actually have a bank heist. And the cool thing about this is that Wonder Woman comes in to save the day. A bank heist, what you usually usually regard as a like a level C hero type deal, like Spider-Man will be uh, stopping a bank heist, Daredevil type stuff. But I'm glad these gods among us are able to come out and save. Uh, the low-level people, you know, once in a while. I'm, we haven't really seen this in the DC Extended Universe yet. Uh, saving people from heists. So it, it's kind of cool to have this type of opening to a trailer, especially with Wonder Woman being the opener, because, you know, she is very successful right now. She is like the main thing that DC Extended Universe has in the public eye. They want to lead with Wonder Woman, and as I said, Wonder Woman's leading the charge in terms of marketing, in terms of the trailer, and maybe even in terms of the movie, but uh, I don't think too much. They're just putting her in the forefront for the trailer for now, but it's great to see her back. Uh, you can tell the color is not very orangey tone as the previous one it actually pops out better you guys see you know regular skin so they don't have too much of that after effect show and it's great to see her doing there they have a little bit of humor in here um i guess in her current job she uh is like a historian of artifacts which makes a lot of sense i mean uh she was kind of like that in batman v superman where she collects artifacts so that makes total sense to in her position. And then they get into, we recognize Superman again. Uh, I don't know if that's a monument or it looks like a bridge. World Without Hope, I like how they recognize that the, the world is not the same without Superman. Crime is leveled, has come up. Or try here this. Lex Luthor got out of the Arkham Asylum. I hear Lex Luthor and something Arkham Asylum. Lex Luthor, the Arkham Asylum, something like that. But if you go ahead and listen to 48 seconds and to 51, so there's something about Lex Luthor and Arkham Asylum, which is interesting. Uh, and I picked that up after about <laughs> 15th, 16th viewing, and I just noticed, I heard that, and I'm like, did I hear that correctly? Lex Luthor, Arkham Asylum? Hmm. Batman really did put him in Arkham Asylum like he promised he would in Batman v Superman. So he might have got out because Superman's gone, a lot of people are hitting more of the crime. I'm surprised that Cape Crusader is not showing up around. Uh, so this shot here is, this is definitely the, I think it's the Kryptonian ship area. This is where uh, the monument was or some, maybe the docks or something, I'm not sure. But this, this has a, uh, he's standing on an eye beam uh, and then it cuts to this which is a totally different scene altogether but for clever editing they make it look like the same thing the one thing about this trailer is that it's really long it's it's like four minutes and there's like a whole bunch of footage that we've never seen and that's amazing for movies where sometimes you in trailers you snippets and you can kind of gather what the movie is um, this one I feel like we haven't seen, we haven't even touched the iceberg of what this movie is. There's so much new stuff in here that I couldn't even comprehend that we're actually seeing. Like, I thought, you know, sometimes you think you've mapped it out in your head, but it's not. The first time we see a boom tube, like literally, it <laughs> they, it really is just a tube that comes down, it's booming down, Steppenwolf is coming to gather that one mother box 
that I guess they have. And they look like they're all prepared for it. They already knew what was coming. Uh, she probably already recognizes what a boom tube is, is and says, Gather your forces! Dark side returns with Steppenwolf. And only oh, yeah. I know he's CG, but I feel like this is like actual physical stuff here, like a costume. Um, and uh, you don't see him here yet. Hold on. Compared to the toy, he looks way more bigger and badass. Way bigger than what the toys have shown us, the figures have shown us. More bulkier, especially in the torso area, and I love that. He needs to be that incredible, powerful being that we need to gather heroes for. Not that size matters. This part, Atlantean, uh, we've seen some of this before, but I, I generally love the special effects here. I've always wondered how were they going to have a whole movie of an Aquaman movie underwater and make it look like water and not CG, you know, not too much CG and not him like choking up on water. I mean, Batman v Superman, he actually went into the water so it looks weird because he was trying to breathe <laughs> but this looks even better and i think we really corrected it uh made me more believe in the aquaman no lanterns no, lanterns. no kryptonians so no lanterns no kryptonians yes green lanterns this exist in this and you know already the slate had green lantern corpse um, no Kryptonians, uh, and that's the Siren Hines voice for Steppenwolf is so incredible. I mean, he, just, you, he, when you're listening to him, you know this is the man to be feared. This is a monster, and if he means business, he he has come to destroy. He has come to take over, uh, realizing there are no lanterns, no Kryptonians to stop him. Um, he thinks it's, it's going to be a piece of cake. But, and of course, I don't know what's happening here. This looks like a gas station or something. I don't know if it's a hologram. But apparently, this is probably Superman. But some people said, I was thinking about this too. Like, it's. Leg feels skinny, unless I'm not seeing a whole leg. And I'm like wondering, am I looking too much into this? And maybe this is a, a Supergirl? Nah. I don't think that. There'll be too much to put in. But notice how how very red this is how very colorful this is it's not muted anyway and it just shows that maybe what Joss Whedon is doing in the post-production is uh, is actually actively color correcting could be a difference between Joss Whedon and Zack Snyder's uh, editing material probably I, I don't know if that's Iris West in the background it looks like does it look like her it looks like a Caucasian lady with red hair this is monstrous I mean Steppenwolf is a monster, but but the thing that I feared, which might become to fruition, is the way he looks. Um, he's very much diff different from Ares, but I'm wondering if a lot of people would think, oh, it's Ares, he's back. Even his weapon that he uses, it's an axe, but if a lot of people may or may not remember what weapon Ares used, and just seeing a horn, giant horned guy, it, uh, for me, the general audience, I wonder if it's going to be too generic for them. I hope not. I hope it explains well that this is not Ares, right? A little Easter egg of the penguin. <laughs> penguin things here. That's so awesome. I like how uh, Wonder Woman is out. She's telling them. She is actually the experienced one out of all of them, I think. Uh, she, she is the badass. She's the strategist. Um, or maybe Batman strategist, but she is the warrior. She's been through a lot, so I would listen to her. Um, and knowing these two, this is probably Cyborg and Flash's first outing. And so she's pretty much telling them, don't do it alone. We gotta, you know, let's work together, okay? Don't don't try to be a hero <laughs> by yourselves. Okay, let's go to this team. These are dangerous um, people. Originally thought was he's a seasoned hero. Uh, which he is, but all he's really had to need to do is uh, run fast and push people away. And uh, when I first heard that, I was kind of cracking up just how he says it. And that it reminds me of Smallville. Because in Smallville, Tom Willing, I was, my gripe was every single bad guy, he would just run really quickly, push the dude, and run away. Like, that was like, really? 
Superman got a punch, you know. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that was alluding, uh, making fun of that or not, but um, uh, it just shows that uh, there's going to be that part of the storyline where they're going to have to kind of take care of this guy. <laughs> and uh, But at the same time, underestimate his powers, and I think he'll really... Um, they'll they'll be surprised at how much he can help the team. Steppenwolf coming down, crashing into that crawling bat thing. Of course, we've seen that flash see it before. Um, and uh, Wonder Woman taking on Steppenwolf. She's probably the only one who can do it at this point before Aquaman shows up. Steppenwolf trying trying to get the mother box from the Atlanteans. Uh, oh man, this is. So this is what I, I, I'm really looking forward to, the uh, Batman warehouse, the new Batman warehouse scene, but with parademons. And I mean, I'm amazed. This, he's just a dude in a bat suit, and he's able to take on these monsters by himself. That just shows how awesome Batman is. Here we go, Wonder Woman taking on Steppenwolf, goddess versus god, new god. I like the red sky, it just signifies that the boom tube has opened, Paradigms are coming through, Apocalypse is here, um, and them looking to the sky, I don't know what they're looking at, and like, they look like they're in awe, the, I'm, I'm guessing it's Cyborg's able to fly and save them, not sure. Uh, my other guess is maybe Superman, but I don't really want to go there yet. More slow motion. I noticed this bullet scene is just reminds me of Batman v Superman, where in the beginning, or Martha Wayne, I forget, and then the bullet case shell falls down. It just reminds me of that, and it's very Zack Snyder. So you have that slow motion thing. The the world looks like it's in turmoil completely, um, and it, it has that end of the world feeling to it, apocalyptic feeling to it, and I like that, I love it, uh, and it has that urgency to it. Now this, this is interesting, when they all come down here, this is, they're looking, they're looking at the Superman monument. I, I think they are looking at, you see all the flowers in the background, this is where they give flowers and the balloons to Superman, this is the encased Kryptonian ship, uh, Metropolis vehicles here. Um, I think Superman shows up in some shape or form, uh, and they're looking at her. He's in awe. He's kind of like, well, uh, he, she's like kind of smiling, and he's like, oh, okay. No Batman in this, so I don't know what if Batman's up here from found him or not. So that would be kind of very, a really chilling exchange. I think I'd be, uh, I'm getting the chills thinking of Superman's return here, and and I can't wait to see that I wonder what how I hope it's like incredible as I'm thinking in my head I hope we're gonna have that Man of Steel soaring music and I, I just keep hoping for that here everybody's talking about this scene literally this the green light and everybody's like green lantern that's green lantern that's green lantern no no it's literally just a, uh, a light on the flying fox Okay, it's just a tail light or something, you know, planes have lights, you know, it's green, yes, don't freak out about it, <laughs> don't freak out about it, but, um, Aquaman surfing down this guy is just radical, I just like, what, <laughs> it's just crazy, just, uh, and the hair flip, that hair flip, that's <laughs> just, <laughs> He's cool. He's like one of those guys you want to hang out with. <laughs> you know, you want him on your side. Uh, apparently, this is how many of you. Not enough. Uh, notice there's only about four of them here. So this is pre... Three of them, actually. It's pre-Cyborg, pre-Aquaman. Uh, and then, you know they show up because of that behind-the-scenes look that they did filmed a long time back when it was just starting to shoot Justice League. Uh, they had this scene, and they finally showing it, edited together. Um, the flash moment comedy here. Uh, a lot of people are like, you know, some people are like, that's a Joss Whedon added thing. But no, uh, if you go back uh, last, earlier this year, I forget when, or last year, I think, they, they had this scene. Uh, but 
like I said, the colors are popping out now. Red is more red. Um, I, I believe so. It, it just seems that way. And of course, this is the moment everybody, everybody is talking about. And I'm I'm 100% sure. I, I just feel like 100% sure this is like Superman, right? Uh, but there is a thing I want to note here that is the ripple. So I know you're teasing that Jurassic Park thing and they've done it to death in other movies. One, two. So two, one, it could either be the first is a sonic boom, you know how Superman flies, and the second one he lands. Um, and that's very, very much uh, viable. But the other thing is, uh, I know that when you get to the shot, you see this red shoulder here, uh, and it's very much a red cape. People are like, it's Hal Jordan, Green Lantern. Yeah, that could be the case that he's part of what shows up. I'm thinking there's two uh, ripples, maybe two landings, two different heroes. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, that's also a possibility. And so that'd be kind of cool if Green Lantern and uh, <laughs> Superman shows up. Army Hammer and Harry Cavill shows up. That'd be kind of pretty flipping awesome. I would, I don't know, like no one's gonna hate on that if, if it's one. Uh, but Superman for sure. I I think Superman for sure. And you know when you're saying the lens and everybody's like talking about you know well, there's light here, there's green in his eyes. You know this is literally. Um, I mean he's his monitors everywhere. Um, because I think it's the bat cave, but when you kind of look at it, it looks like he's really out in the open. I'm not sure because there's trees behind him, so I'm not sure what exactly he's fixing here. Could be his house because that's the car that Bruce Wayne drove in Batman v Superman. It's not the Batmobile or anything like that. There's a book here. This looks maybe like the cabin in that house. But definitely, I feel this is Superman. It's not Green Lantern, and oh my, it's not Nightwing. Okay, they they won't leave the fate of the world. Literally, he's telling this guy, whoever's here, right, Superman, that it maybe it's not too late. You know, it's not too late. You're you're the only hope. Uh, they will. He won't say that's a Nightwing. If it's Nightwing, he probably says you better hide. You know, <laughs> this is not might be for you. You know, gather like 50 other people and then maybe you can help out. Okay, Nightwing is a dude with sticks. This is Superman or Green Lantern. I don't know, but I think it's Superman because of the red and the way they're hamming it up about hope and everything. Uh, how about you know, Batman's talking about a beacon of hope, and I, I think that really is Superman here. But the, the cool thing is. When Batman is talking about Beacon of Hope and he, he really brings out the best of you, I think he's really talking about himself. About in Batman v Superman, he really turned him around to to take out all that hate and the vengeance, mortality, and to uh, to believe that there's still good in man and bring out the best in me. So he's really talking about himself uh, in, in the case about Superman. He's talking about how Superman saved him. In Batman v Superman, so I thought that was kind of cool, kind of a closure to that, uh, and I'm so pumped to see how they would interact this movie. I wonder if it's gonna be like awkward glances at first, like stick out the hand, and then we got that world's finest moment, maybe. So anyway, awesome, just completely awesome trailer. I I love it, I love it, love it, love it so much. I can't believe it's four minutes. You know, uh, you never expect these comic-con trailers to be that long or even show up online you know at least this showed up online um, and and I'm sad that they didn't bring out Aquaman uh, online I'm sad that you know I mean even Marvel they only brought out Thor Ragnarok which is pretty cool but you know where's the Infinity War trailer but anyway in all in all, this this Justice League comic-con sneak peek they call it it's fantastic it's got everything in here you need to set up what's going on who's involved what are the stakes 
and it leaves a little bit of mystery at the end to make you wonder. Whew. Can't wait. November can't come soon enough. I swear to God, November can't come soon enough. All right, guys, what did you think of the trailer? Did you look at it? Did I miss something that you found while scrolling through the trailer? Um, let me know down in the comments below, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.